Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you for your wonderful association. You can please take over. Hari Bol. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. And uh, it is always a pleasure to be in the association of Vaishnavas to discuss Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, this series that uh, we're going to do for the next 12 weeks is for mainly my personal purification. If I I cannot speak alone, so Krishna has uh, facilitated with sending some so wonderful, you know, devotees to you know uh, encourage so that um, I have some opportunity for self purification. So we'll start with invocation prayers. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Jaiva Narottamam Devi Saraswati Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudiraye Nashtaprayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevayam Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki Om Ajnana Timirandasyam Yananjana Shalakayam Chakshurun Militam Venam Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaham Namaum Vishnu Padayam, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale, Srimate Bhakti Vedantam, Swamin Niti Namine, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvisesha Sunyavadi, Paschatya Deshatarine, Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityanandam, Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So first of all, thank you so much everyone to have... Uh, um, enrolled for this course and uh, as mentioned this is uh, some perspective that we would like to share from Srimad Bhagavatam I actually wanted to give this title of this course as Uncovering the Science of Purification but sometimes we want enticing topic. You know, sometimes we want to know uh, uh, some weird stuff to uh, get ourselves glued to it. That's how I think probably because of my conditioning. So technically, for all practicing devotees, those who have taken shelter of holy name, those who have surrendered to this process of devotional service. There is nothing called as punishment. Everything what we quote unquote think and call as punishment are simply meant for purification. The fifth canto where the different hellish planets that are being described is just the nucleus or to describe about this topic of punishment, but with all your permissions and blessings, we will be covering the entire cross section of this different perspectives of purifications. We are mainly discussing about this topic because as practicing devotees, it is our duty, it is our personal need to go through the stages of purification. When we have to go through the stages of purification, we have to go through stages of pain also, stages of punishment also, stages of challenges also. So we'll have to go through several stages or several 
uh, phases which sometimes in our conditioned state we may think as some sort of uh, a deterrence. We may think it as some sort of an obstacle. Sometimes we may really think it in a right perspective. So this whole series of 12 weeks um, we, are, we are hoping that uh, all of you will stay um, glued to this program. I will try to keep as relevant as simple as I can but we can definitely um, um, fine tune and also accommodate the question answers and discussions and also your experiences and realizations to make sure it does this whole series doesn't remain as a monologue rather it can be a kind of a, a, a collective learning this topic of punishment you will see in the entire Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada has used this word punishment in different, different context. But as the ethos of our Gaudiya Vaishnavism explains, the day we take shelter of holy name, the day we take shelter of Vaishnavas. The, way, the day we take shelter of Krishna, even though we may not be pure devotees, we are definitely considered as devotees. Krishna is not giving the title devotees only to those who are transformed one. Krishna is giving the title devotee even those who have enrolled and subscribed to be part of this Krishna consciousness process. So the day we have said Krishna I am ready to chant I am ready to listen I am ready to introspect. I am ready to be part of this bhakti movement. We are no more under the control of material nature. We are going to have a stage of wobbling between multiple personality disorder because we are still not fully transformed devotees. But then this entire journey is going to be the journey of purification. So technically, this series is uncovering the science of purification. We will have this series discussed a bit analytically. We will discuss several perspectives with examples. And eventually, towards the fag end, we will consolidate this entire learning towards some sets of applications. Because if we are just doing some theoretical studies without proper application, then I guess we have not fully taken advantage of this learning. The entire purpose of this Krishna consciousness is to transform ourselves from the stage of Naradama to eventually reach up to the stage of Narottama. 
Naradama means lowest amongst the mankind. And Narottama is a self-realized soul. This is not for some sort of a title, but Shla Prabhupada explains in the preface to Nectar of Instruction that the purpose of this Krishna consciousness movement is to become Goswamis. He says that unless one is able to control his mind and senses, one will not be able to make necessary progress. In all spiritual affairs, one's first duty is to control his mind and senses. Unless one controls his mind and senses, one cannot make any advancement in spiritual life. Everyone within this material world is engrossed in the modes of passion and ignorance. One must promote himself to the platform of goodness, Satvaguna, by following the instructions of Rupa Goswami. And then everything concerning how to make further progress will be revealed. So it is important to note that in our journey to Krishna consciousness, as Shla Prabhupada is explaining, we need to work towards our controlling of mind and senses so that we can raise up to the platform of Sattva Guna so that we can eventually be a qualified candidate for a transcendental science to be revealed. Hence, this series is going to be driving towards some basics of our understanding which we may know. Sometimes we may struggle to apply. So we will go through this learning as well as the application for our purification. As a meditative verse, I just want to uh, read a particular shloka from Bhagavad Gita. This is Bhagavad Gita chapter 18, text number 58. Machitta Sarva Durgani Matprasada Tarishyasi Atachetvam Ahankaran Na shroshyasi vinangshyasi. So, if you become conscious of me, you will pass over all the obstacles of conditioned life by my grace. If, however, you do not work in such consciousness, but act through false ego, not hearing me, you will be lost. So, Srila Prabhupada is giving a, a fantastic purport. But let us just meditate on this translation and the you know, shloka for a minute. Krishna is making this statement. These are all you know, technically... Uh, a kind of a conclusive statement. Krishna is wrapping up his entire instructions to Arjuna. And he says, if you become conscious of me, Prabhupada 
established international society for krishna consciousness and to go back to the preface of an envoy shla prabhupada writes advancement in krishna consciousness depends on the attitude of the follower a follower of the krishna consciousness movement should become a perfect goswami so technically if you put everything together in a perspective shila prabhupada that set up is gone so that we all can become goswamis we all can become goswamis only if we are learning to fix our attitude properly if our attitude is proper everything concerning how to make further progress will be revealed for the attitude to be proper we need to be in mode of goodness for we need to be in mode of goodness we need to learn to control our mind and senses forever so as to control our mind and senses one should not remain in false ego by not hearing about krishna if we do so we will be lost so this is the this is the entire mapping right from being krishna conscious till the stage of we going to be lost we know where is the link and where is the weak spot in third chapter of krishna krishna is warning about this ahankara the 18th chapter of krishna krishna is talking about ahankara so it is not something that we don't know but the nature of the disease is such that it will not let us function properly so we need to have some extraordinary endeavor and one of them is to study systematically and to take some course treatment so prabhu writes in the purport a person in full krishna consciousness is not unduly anxious about executing the duties of his existence the foolish cannot understand this great freedom from all anxiety for one who acts in krishna consciousness lord becomes the most intimate friend he always looks after his friend's comfort and he gives himself to his friend who is so devotedly engaged working 24 hours a day to please the lord therefore no one should be carried away by the false ego of the bodily concept of life one should not falsely think himself independent of the laws of material nature or free to act he is already under strict material laws but as soon as he acts in krishna consciousness he is liberated free from the material perplexities one should note very carefully that one who is not active in krishna consciousness is losing himself in the material whirlpool in the ocean of birth and death no conditioned soul actually knows what is to be done and what is not to be done but a krishna but a person who acts in krishna consciousness is free to act because everything is prompted by krishna from within and confirmed by the spiritual master so what a master stroke purport that shla prabhupada has given and this is the seed and inspiration for our entire course so if we 
swing towards Krishna consciousness from the perspective of being a Krishna consciousness person in our attitude, very carefully orchestrating our actions, thoughts, and if we are able to elevate ourselves to the mode of goodness, we are Krishna's friend and we are looked after. If we fail to understand this, then we are lost in the material whirlpool, which means we have to go to go through certain uh, course and it could be for a long, long, long period of time. So technically, uncovering the science of purification and uncovering the science of punishment. So both is going to be combined as a part. So sometimes this punishment is a purification and sometimes this punishment is to teach a lesson and eventually they are all meant to help the individual spirit soul to realize his constitutional position. So with this introduction to this whole day, this first day of our session, we are going to discuss an overview of this um, entire course. And from the next week onwards, we will go over several individual topics. And I will see to that. I will share some notes as well. Today is just the day being the day of giving an overview of this. Um, we will try to absorb a general perspective about this, uh, this series. And then we all can um, go a little more technical as well as uh, systematic in our churning of this topic. So as a part of the overview, with this meditation, my first point that I want to discuss is about the science of pain to punishment, where many times we associate punishment towards pain. And by design, the soul doesn't want to accept pain. By design, we all want to remain happy. So, this topic is also intriguing because somewhere we do not want punishment. Somewhere we do not want pain. But somehow, we are going through several layers of pain. So my first reflection as a part of this overview is to describe about this aspect of pain to punishment or pain versus punishment. So the idea is Sometimes we are given this pain so that we learn. We are given this punishment so that we learn. Sometimes the pain is given as a matter of revenge by someone. Sometimes the pain is given to prove a point and sometimes pain is given 
to establish ourselves in right consciousness. And at the transcendental you know, stage, the pain is as good as the joy. So these are all different perspectives from the perspective of somebody is given pain, oblique punishment to correct oneself. From the view perspective of a general understanding of a punishment, there are three you know, purposes why somebody is punished. It is to discourage one from committing further harmful action. It is meant to recognize and correct one's mistake. And it is also to balance out our karmic reactions. So, my first reflection is in the overview about this course is to understand this pain to punishment story. For a practicing devotee, we are always in a, a perplexed, a question mark mode. We always wonder why such things are happening to me. We have our bridge courses in the title called Why Bad Things Happen to Good People. And sometimes even we have a question Why Good Things Happen to Bad People? And sometimes we question that after me coming into Krishna consciousness I am undergoing more pain than otherwise. So, this topic or this reflection about pain to punishment is very important to understand as a part of our primary understanding of this course. So, when a person is given pain because punishment is not generally seen as some very interesting, enticing, happy thing. Punishment means there is a, a natural uh, associated uh, a pain, underlying pain, which is not that we would generally welcome in a conditioned state. So, this arrangement is by the supreme will of the Lord. When a person is under the purview of the supreme Lord's governance, then the Lord is going to put him through his administrative policies. Which means, if you break the laws of the Lord, if you violate the laws of the Lord, you are bound to be punished. If you violate the laws of the Lord and you are a devotee, then what are you supposed to be done? If you violate the laws of the Lord and if you are a devotee who has surrendered to this process under the bona fide spiritual master, then how does this going to pan out? So we are going to discuss about different types of punishment and we are going to churn this throughout this course by various examples from Srimad Bhagavatam. Right from punishments given by the Lord, by the uh, divine nature, Daivihi Esha Gunamayi Mama Maya Duradhyaya. So Maya has got a natural arrangement 
to uh, punish from that stage to eventually from the self realized the soul going through what we call as quote unquote pain and challenges so we are going to discuss all the cross section where the swap cantos different stages of hellish planets happens to be one uh, one aspect of it and one nucleus of it but there are more sciences that we will not associate so a person who has to go through this pain for learning uh, for him this pain is actually not something that is seen as suffering rather it is seen as something that is beneficial i will just read a portion from an article written by chaitanya charan prabhu so he has made a very wonderful perspective on this god is not just a dispassionate judge concerned only about giving due punishments for wrong doings because we are all children of lord we need to understand that the lord is not some judge who just pronounces uh, his verdict he is also a spiritually passionate benefactor deeply concerned about our reformation and restitution in krishna's compassionate scheme of things his interaction with us is not restricted to the administration of appropriate punishment as is the case of a judge interacting with the wrong doer so what i want to say here is that krishna by whatever arrangement that he has done to punish to purify to give us pain it is just not an act of administration alone krishna accompanies us as he just read in the purport constantly as the indwelling super soul wanting to help us make wise choices by which we can ultimately attain the spiritual level of reality at that level we can reclaim our right to eternal happiness in immortal spiritual love for him the right that we have lost due to our spiritual amnesia our forgetfulness of our identity as souls as his beloved parts so prabhu prabhu has mentioned very nicely that krishna has made this arrangement because everything is under the control of the supreme lord let us not forget this meditative verse 18.58 where krishna says if you are conscious of me i am your friend if you are part of ahankara then you are lost so the idea is that krishna's arrangement is to somehow or other help us to wake from our spiritual amnesia we have forgotten our constitutional nature we have forgotten that we are part and parcel of the supreme lord and somehow that we need some arrangement and one of them is this act of putting us through some stages of punishment of the purification so my first reflection is to understand that as a practicing devotee a pain in krishna consciousness or a punishment in krishna consciousness 
is just not meant in the punitive language. Krishna consciousness is not a punitive process. Krishna consciousness is an absolutely merciful process. Krishna consciousness is an absolutely a dear and loving process. And the stage of purification which we sometimes you know um, classify as pain, punishment you know, is actually a very temporary and also beneficiary stage for us to eventually become closer to Krishna and make it to the spiritual level. So this is my first reflection to say that this pain to punishment is not to underestimate the Supreme Lord's purpose. The pain to punishment is to understand the Supreme Lord's purpose. It is towards his kindness upon us rather than his revenge or he is not like any other materialistic envious person who has this mentality of taking revenge. So, this is my first reflection. The second reflection that I want to register here as a part of the overview is about the five reasons why even someone suffers. This five reasons for suffering is something that is very important for us to know because all through the while in our Krishna conscious journey, we are constantly wondering and constantly asking Krishna this question, why? Huh? Look at your general prayer session. We ask Krishna, why? Why am I suffering? Why am I put in this stage? Why is this so happening to me like this? So we many times wonder and go on asking Krishna and go on sometimes questioning Krishna. Why? 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 And Krishna can easily ask us, why not? So when we ask Krishna, why? Why Krishna I am suffering? So what if Krishna asks, why not? So our Acharyas have helped us in analyzing the reason for our such sufferings or such you know, situation of this pain. So my second reflection hence is to analyze the five important reasons why a person undergoes pain or sufferings. This is associated with our conditioning and this conditioning is classified into this five. Number one is ignorance. Number two is as described in the words that we just discussed is false ego. Number three is attachment. Number four is hatred and number five is our acquired materialistic nature. So these five are the reasons for us, primary reasons. We are going to discuss many, many more technical things as we move forward. 
but the primary underlying reason why a person is going through this pain, suffering, punishment, or whatever that is. I repeat, number one is ignorance. Number two is false ego. Number three is attachment. Number four is hatred. Number five is acquired material nature. And these five things are born out of our previous sinful activities. So typically, so long as we are sinful, these five things, they keep coming again and again to us. So long as we are not going to stop our sinful activities, this five things are not going to stop. Our past sins are definitely going to produce some byproducts and these five are those byproducts. And so long as we are not stopping them, we are going to have a perpetuity into this suffering. And one of the ways to stop this suffering, one of the ways by which we get rid of these five things, is to put us through the process of purification and one part of purification is punishment. So punishment is not everything. Let us not dwell on this word punishment because Krishna consciousness, once again I am saying, is not a punitive process. Krishna consciousness is a very merciful process. But the discussion about punishment is to help us highlight, help us realize, help us make sure that we address the root cause. Because as practicing devotees, especially in our anartha nivritti stage, we tend to understand certain things are majorishly. We tend to take shelter of holy name and continue to commit sinful activities thinking that holy name will, you know, purify. That is why one of the offenses against the holy name is to not to commit sinful activities on the strength of the holy name of the Lord. But if you very closely analyze because of our conditioning, because of our association, because of our not going through this process of purification, not going through this process of punishment, we tend to remain in the suffering state. And that is not our natural state of being. A very famous story of Indra being cursed towards being a, a hog in the earthly planets for one year. Indra was you know, put to become a hog and when Brahma is coming at the end of the so-called so punishment phase, when Brahma is calling back Indra, my dear Indra, you please come back. The nature of conditioning is so intense that we are not even realizing that we are in suffering state. Brahma, Indra denied saying that I am very happy with my family. Look at my family. Look at my beautiful children. Look at wonderful, you know, delicious food that I get every day. Why are you disturbing me in this arrangement? 
So when we hear this you know, as a story, we say, what a stupid guy this Indra is. He is Indra man. He should go back. What's fun in being in this filthy place? What's fun in being in this you know, gutter? But very conveniently we would have said that. But if you very deeply analyze, we can replace the name Indra with our own names. Because somewhere we are not supposed to suffer. We are not supposed to be in this stage of conditioning as we are currently put in. And when we are being called, please come up, take up Krishna consciousness, become devotees. We also give a similar response like Indra. Saying that, look at my house. I recently bought for a million dollars. Look at this car. Look at my beautiful family. So, so many reasoning that we give. And we say that we are properly situated and I do not want uh, any of those things. Let me first enjoy what I have acquired now. So my second reflection is to say that we need to realize the root cause of these pain and punishment. The third reflection is about whom this course is going to be beneficial. Because I know this aspect of pain to uh, punishment, I, I heard you now uh, that it is not that Krishna is some sort of a modern day judge who is just interested in giving punishment to the wrongdoers. He has a motherly heart, so he wants to get us out of our amnesia. We spoke about the reason for our suffering. So the third point is about discussing about four types of personalities and which personality can actually go through this entire course and can take advantage of them and what is the right frame of mind for us to evolve in this Krishna consciousness journey. So I want to define four types of persons. Number one type is one who realizes his mistakes and he is knowing the corrective action and he is already in the corrective stage. This is one type of a person. So I know what mistakes I am doing. And I also know I have to take some corrective actions. And I am already doing the corrective actions. So this is the first type. And they are anyway in the corrective course. There is second type of people who knows that they have mistakes or they are suffering because of some sinful or some mistakes of theirs. They know they have to perform some corrective actions but they are not able to. So which means I am conditioned. I am in so much conditioning I realize that I have a problem. I agree that I have a problem but I am not able to go through or perform the necessary corrective actions. So, in the second category of the person is they are accepting there is a problem. They are accepting that there is a corrective course but they are not yet doing. Now, the third stage of person is somebody who is an absolute 
stage of ignorance and novice that they don't even know they are in trouble. And they think that life means it will be like this. They are absolutely, you know, not having any types of realization. Uh, sometimes we get to hear from the modern day management gurus or people, they say that, you know, this is something that that's part of life. This is something that, you know, this is how life is. But Srimad Bhagavatam very strongly condemns this is not how we are supposed to live. This is not something that we are destined to. We are not supposed to be here. We are supposed to be in the spiritual world. This is not our house. It is like someone coming to you in the jail and saying, yeah, yeah, you know, this is the house that you have to live. No. Somehow we have considered jail as our house. And then we are, you know, trying to describe about which is the better cell in the jail, which is the better privilege in the jail. That guy in the jail is having a different types of arrangement than me. So we are comparing within the jail different types of people, but not realizing we are inside the jail. So the third category of person is such an ignorant one who thinks the jail is the house and doesn't even know that there's an actual house outside of the outside of the jail. And the fourth category is the one who is adamant, arrogant, who doesn't accept and he challenges God. He doesn't accept the authority of God and trying to prove a point and blame others and try to beat around the bush. So, the reason why we are discussing these four categories is if you are part of category one, for sure, you can help us learn in this course by your realizations, we would like to hear from you. If you are number two and three, then we have a lot more to learn because we need support system. We need some sort of a, an ecosystem. We need scaffolding to help us eventually transform because the person in the stage two, the category two, he accepts, but he is not able to. He just need two or three or four or five members. Like, like for example, when we are in Mayapur Dham, when we are in Mathura Dham, when we are in Rindhavan Dham, when we are in Jagannath Puri Dham, when we are in the assembly of Vaishnavas, you look at your Krishna consciousness mapping. Huh? When we are surrounded by devotees, if you plot our graph, you know, there's an ECG graph or some sort of a graph, our Krishna consciousness will be in its peak. When we are in our private self, all alone, 10.30 uh, in the night, not finished our rounds and having internet on, and nobody at home. Uh, so we have, uh, uh, we have a very fantastic personality that we would have not known about ourselves. Oh my God, I had such a demon sitting within me. So, we, number two and number three are those candidates who needs to go through these types of learnings. Keep looking for these opportunities for learnings. Otherwise, we will, in spite of, you know, whatever, uh, you know, facilities we have, we will, we will miss the train. The fourth category are those about whom also we will discuss. They are not anyone, but for them, they need a different treatment. They need a different types of punishment. They need a different types of course correction. So these four types of people, if we are number one, great. Please keep doing what you are doing. 
very soon you are going to see Krishna. If you are number two and number three, then buckle up. We have some wonderful learnings coming our way. I'm sure just by we choosing to be a devotee, we have some hopes. And beware of number four. They could be the reason why we are in number two and number three. If you are associating with number four, maybe they would have made you to be a number three or number two person. So that's my third reflection to analyze or uh, to give a perspective that four types of people who are uh, there, there you can you can you know define 40 more types, but I just want to, you know, for the sake of our discussions, I classify these four types to make sure that we at least fall under the category of two. And if you know anyone in the category of three, we just go and pick them up and ask them to enroll for this course or enroll for some course in Iskan Bhagavad Mahavidyalaya so that they have a hope to you know get purified. And my last reflection, and this, uh, this reflection is about uh, a very important aspect of our Krishna consciousness journey, an important aspect from our um, uh, spiritual standpoint, that this Mahaprabhu's Sankirtan movement is meant to pick up all these four types of people, pick up all kinds of Naradamas, and to somehow make sure that we are completely transformed. So my fourth reflection as a part of the overview is to say that this journey of Krishna consciousness is not something is going to be giving us pain this journey is going to give us joy and this joy is intertwined with some layers of pain because we are need to be purifying our multiple personality disorder. So the fourth reflection in today's overview is to say that we will conclude our series to say how joyful this Krishna consciousness is that if we understand the joy of Krishna consciousness, we will realize even the pain in Krishna consciousness is joyful. As we always say, a pregnant lady, a pregnant lady, if she is not going through pregnancy pains, assume that a pregnant lady does not have any symptoms no nausea, no pain, no kind of vomiting, no, it, it, she is absolutely normal. She will go to the doctor 20 times. Am I okay? Is everything all right? Why I'm not getting pain? Why am so basically as a part of our, you know, carrying Krishna, as a part of our, you know, received the, receiving this beej, bhakti lata beej. Brahmanda Brahmite Kona Bhagavanji Guru Krishna Prasade Pai Bhakti Lata Bij. This seed is in, is being sown. It's a very wonderful seed. It, it is going to give us wonderful fruits. So Burijan Prabhu mentions this that this Krishna consciousness is joyfully, happily performed. And this joyfully, happily performable process needs some sort of a course correction which we call as disciplining which may be seen as punishment which may be seen as pain that is why the word pain can be given a synonym as austerity pain can be given in terms of patience tolerance because these are all not the word that people in this material world would like to hear why should i tolerate because I am the master, I am the controller. Uh, why should I, you know, go, go to go through some sort of uh, patience? Why should I wait? I have my own rights to enjoy. So, this stage of joyfully performing uh, is the need of this whole uh, 
uh, hour for our Krishna consciousness. So my fourth reflection is to say, as an overview, that this entire endeavor of learning this science of purification, public punishment, is to joyfully perform Krishna consciousness. I, I've, played, I've been speaking about this in the last uh, 10 days, I do not know why, in many forums. Please learn to be a happy and a joyful devotee. In my journey to Krishna consciousness in the last 35 years, I fail to you know, understand how even after being in Krishna consciousness, we do not smile. Devotees means they need to smile. You smile. You be a happy devotee. Krishna is with you. We just read in the purport that Krishna is within. Krishna is ready to help us. Krishna is hearing us. If you know Krishna is part of your life, in every possible situation we can smile. I will end it with a very small you know, anecdote that Gauranga Prabhu you know, mentioned in one of his, uh, you know, what we call his, uh, his video bites. He mentioned about a small girl who was uh, traveling in a uh, flight. So that flight was going through an extreme turbulence. So this flight was going through an, you know, unbelievable turbulence that all the Passengers, they were all freaking out. They were holding on to their breath and, you know, they weren't sure. But this one small baby, she was, you know, playing with uh, her toys and books and stuff like that. But somehow, when the, the flight landed, so the fellow passengers went to that small girl, saying that, Beta, you are, we are all, we are all adults. We are all freaking out. And how come you were so, you know, peaceful? And the response that, that uh, the girl gave is that the flight pilot is my father. Huh? He loves me. It is impossible for him to give me pain. So the message of this entire series, if we understand this one particular point, that Krishna is our father. Krishna is our beloved. Krishna is our eternal companion and Krishna does not have an agenda of being a punitive judge. Krishna has only one agenda. By hook, if I can say, by crook, he wants to reclaim us. He wants to get us back. If we just know this fact, we should have a smile in our face. Because Krishna consciousness is supposed to be joyfully performed. If you are going to take medicines from a bona fide doctor, you are going to get cured. I am sure taking medicine is not a very good thing. But by just getting the right medicine from the right doctor assures us we are going to be cured very soon. So we can have a very hopeful arrangement. It is very risky to not know that we are diseased. Now that we know we are diseased, now that we know the right doctor, now that we know the right medicine, all that we need to do is to consume the medicine rightly. I am sure we are going to get cured. The doctor is sure. The process gives an assurance and we have an example in front of us Several thousand millions of people who already got cured and made it. So hence my fourth reflection is that this Krishna consciousness is joyfully performed. To be joyfully performed. To be happily performed. So even the course of punishments and purification is a matter of joy, not a matter of, uh, uh, you know, moroseness or remorse. So the, uh, the idea is that as practicing devotees, let us learn to smile. Let us learn to be happy. Let us not hound and howl at people because we are going through some sort of a purification. 
sometimes uh, we get to see people who are fasting nirjala ekadashi they go on howl at their own fellow family members who are eating because they are hungry because they are going through some sort of an apparent austerity uh, hey, i am i am going through this uh, austerity why are eating in front of me and they kind of you know go after them just because you are going through some purification you should not put others in trouble we have to go through this because it is our you know journey so with this uh, for reflection and overview i would like to you know um, stop this first session and to uh, give some uh, uh, hope that this journey of krishna consciousness is a wonderful journey and it is a very very hopeful journey that one day we are going to see krishna face to face we as practicing devotees we need to understand punishment is not just a deterrent it is just not some sort of a, 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 a punitive arrangement for us we are going to go to wonderful stages of purification so we will analyze all of them in our uh, next set of uh, you know series i mean the next set of uh, you know sessions so to before we wrap up the session we had four uh, reflections as a part of the overview and we also had a meditation the meditation is on the verse 18.58 please read them again and again because krishna says if you swing towards false ego you are lost when krishna says you are lost which means you are lost if krishna says i am with you so just that one act of being conscious of krishna takes care of so many things krishna is saying that you be conscious of conscious of me i will take you through it's like a father helping the child to make them through the journey so it is important for us to uh, understand this perspective so we had four reflections one is pain to punishment number 2 why we are suffering number 3 four types of people who go through this you know uh, feelings and thoughts of uh, pains and sufferings and took this uh, fourth reflection is krishna consciousness is meant to be happily performed so we are supposed to happily joyfully perform this krishna consciousness so let's buckle up thank you so much grantra shrimad bhagavatam ki jai shila prabhu pada ki jai as i said in the beginning of the class i will try to share some notes and probably you know i would uh, be happy to uh, take up any questions if people have time i'm sure uh, in us it is late in the night or in at least uh, supposed to be a dinner time or uh, for india it's early in the morning so anybody has any questions i would be happy to respond hari krishna jai hari krishna prabhu ji excellent excellent session prabhu very nice the way you have set the stage for the upcoming sessions and that would i think so today after hearing your class feels like that we should not miss the future sessions so much to uncover so much so many so much practical sessions i should say because the first class itself seems to be so practical especially i'll talk about myself that every day we experience so we need to really yeah i'm facing some questions there is only one question prabhu which i see on the chat box that for number 2 and 3 kind of people what learning do you recommend <laughs> please be part of this course the next uh, you know 11 sessions and uh, i guess uh, not that because i'm teaching this but because we are going to learn from shrimad bhagavatam so the idea is that uh, number 2 and number 3 is actually uh, the real candidate for um, um learning the science of krishna consciousness anyway number 1 guy is doing what he is doing and number 4 is somebody you need to be careful about krishna will handle them differently that also we will learn but number 2 and number 3 are you know either we are in ignorant category or we are into a you know category of uh, stuck conditioned you know maybe uh, not know how to come out of it we are kind of you know wondering about 
there is a very nice uh, prayer. Uh, it be a good prayer to you know remember here by Bilva Mangala Thakura. Samsara kupe patito tyagade mohanda purne vishaya vitapte karavalambam mamadehi vishnu govinda damodara madaveti. He saying samsara kupe patito tyagade says this samsara, this worldly life is like a dark well or if you can say it is like a quicksand, dalbal made of mohan dapurne vishaya tapte. So it is like filled with lust, greed, anger, ego, envy, pride, illusion, so many things. Huh? So he is saying Somehow I have fallen into that well, fallen into that quicksand. If somebody has fallen into a quicksand, you can be a wonderful uh, civil engineer, mechanical engineer or a bodybuilder or whomever you are. I don't think so if any one of you will have an experience of falling into the quicksand. But if you, you would have watched in some movies or heard, if, you, if both the legs are inside the quicksand, you can't help yourself. How will you come out of it? You can only raise both the hands and just wave and scream for help. Huh? Please, hey, help, 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 help. As loud as you can till your head is, you know, uh, you know, drowned inside the sand. So that's what Dilva Mangala Thakura is saying. Mohan the Purne Vishaya I have fallen into such a quick sand. Karavalambam Mamadehi Vishnu. So all I am doing is I am sticking my hand out and chanting Govinda, Damodara, Madhava. Now you please lift me. So the straight answer to the point that has been asked is that um, the learning is to somehow or other surrender to Krishna, be conscious of Krishna and we have a lot of learnings and practical applications that we will be discussing throughout this course. So maybe you can stay put or you can refer to our recorded sessions. Uh, but the fundamental core point is those who are surrendering to Krishna, even if they have not fully got purified, even if they have a lot more things to you know, change, Krishna gives them the title devotee. And if you are a devotee, you are treated differently. If you are not a devotee, Somebody else is going to treat. Krishna has got two functions. One is an administrative function, which is taken care by his administrative body. And Krishna has got his personal function, where he personally look after. The devotees he personally look after. Or he sends his dearest devotees to look after. For other people, his agents takes care. So at least let us try to become a devotee by accepting Krishna's supremacy. Just say this, Krishna, I accept you. Krishna, I am ready to follow you. You can take your own time. But if you just say this, Krishna will also participate in this journey. I hope I have responded to you. Any other comments, questions, reflections, thoughts? Yes, yeah, Sindhu Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Mataji, thank you Mataji. Hare Krishna Prabhu, wonderful session. As you said, uh, initially when I read the title, I didn't want to join the class, right? Uncovering punishments, why do I need to know? <laughs> why do I need to go through that? Then when Kisida Mataji um, said in one of the classes that, you know, all of you join, I said, I, out of curiosity, I joined because I don't want to know about punishment. If you had some Krishna Kata, I would have joined. So you rightly put it in the first session only why we need to know punishment. Yeah, so in the stage, you've set it right for us. And the example that you gave of Ekadashi, I have gone through it, <laughs> right? Doing Ekadashi, my daughter says, don't come near me. <laughs> 
because I'm very bad on those days, right? So it, it, it's the realizations or whatever examples you gave are so true, so practical. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you so much for bringing this to us, Hare Krishna. I'm so sorry. I'm not sure how many people are thinking that stupid, stupid guy is, you know, trying to talk about punishment. I was actually nervous because I do not want any senior devotees or Maharajas whom I know call me and say that Ram Giridhar, you rascal, you are actually, you know, disturbed, distorted the entire science of Krishna consciousness. Please talk about mercy. Please talk about the certain things. Sometimes, you know, uh, we need to, we need to kind of do some weird titles to even intrigue something. Um, so I'm sorry in case uh, my title had, uh, you know, put some people off. Uh, it is not just, uh, because this actually put Parikshit Maharaj off. When Sukadeva Goswami explained about this entire topic of punishments, Parikshit Maharaj was not very happy. He said that, my dear sir, what are you talking? Just by describing these hellish planets, by giving punishments, uh, you know, do you think people will be all right? Prabhupada explains about this in the first shloka of Nekhla instruction. He's explaining in the sixth canto. So, I just thought I will just, uh, I'm sorry, sorry the title is... Really, no, really, no, really no, really Prabhu. Off. No, Prabhu. When somebody from his con talks, it's never... I am in ignorance and that's why I think that way. Everything is related to Krishna. That's what we have to take. I'm in ignorance. So, uh, thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes, uh, Susilpa Mataji, please go ahead. Uh, Hare Krishna. <clears throat> thank you, Mataji, for giving the opportunity. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Dhanwat Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, thank you so very much, Prabhuji. Very beautifully presented uh, with uh, the reflections. I have a question, but prior to that, I just want to glorify you. As Mataji, I think Sindhu Mataji was explaining, she, did, she didn't want to join, but actually looking at the title, I wanted to join. I was more curious to know what exactly, but in an intention um, in a thought, something like uh, Garuda Purana related punishments and so forth. <laughs> Wanted to know um, the, the punishment related to the mistakes or sinful activities. Uh, I, in that way of impression, I was joining. Uh, but uh, totally opposite. Uh, you made it so, um, explained so beautifully the, the fourth reflection that Krishna consciousness is a joyful um, journey. And though the obstacles come in, uh, devotees take it um, so joyfully to to, and then it's a it's a it's a stepping stone for advancement, as you rightly mentioned. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. That's so peaceful. Um, in the overview session itself, you are <laughs> your uh, explanation is giving hope. Uh, to, to continue not to fall down. That's one reflection, Prabhuji. Oh, one question, just a minor. Um, to your explanation, you were mentioning about reflections, like first reflection, second reflection. Is it is it something related to the topic or uh, I didn't get that exactly? Yeah, basically, I don't know. Uh, my um, general uh, you know, uh, sharing is these are all some things um, when I say reflections, they are uh, part of uh, the learnings that I have learned over a period in time. And I put them as my reflections and realizations. And they are uh, open to be corrected and changed. So because what happens is sometimes when you refer Acharyas, quote them, we refer that this is what Rupa Goswami says, this is what Madhuri Kadamini says, this is what Bhagavad Gita says. But when we offer such courses like this, these are all some sort of a collective thoughts based on some learnings that we had, some quotes that we referred, some points that we would have realized through the, throughout the journey in Krishna consciousness. So when we put such course, uh, structured course like this, so this also have my personal thoughts. So the way I am aligning, why the way the overview is planned, the way next section sessions are going to be planned, they have, I can say with little arrogance, they are put in from my personal perspective. And they need not necessarily be the perspective. So I, I am ready to change, ready to correct, and everybody can contribute. That's what I said. I said four types of people. 
Are there only four types of people? If somebody says, give me a pramana for this four types of people. Give me, you know, uh, you know, a sloka reference for this four types of people. So probably, you know, they are all, uh, you know, they are all arranged and classified in a manner to drive home a point. And mm -hmm. there can be many, many more points and perspectives, but at least by presenting as my personal reflections, I just want to say that these are all the learnings that I've had. And this is when I go through this series, this is how I would want to explain. And uh, uh, so that way I've used the word, my reflections. And uh, wherever there are uh, references and quote, I will make sure that I will highlight them. Or I, if I may paraphrase, I may use them as a part of my presentation. So that is, uh, this, is, this is my uh, simple understanding on uh, whatever I have learned from this topic. Uh, did I answer you, Mataji? Uh, yes, Prabhuji, definitely. You're so humble uh, to, to say that you're, you're, uh, you've collected, but yeah, th that's definitely helpful, Prabhuji. Thank you so very much. Hare Krishna. To be very honest, the entire science of Krishna consciousness, if I can use this word, Shla Prabhupada is saying that uh, we are supposed to be independently thoughtful and align ourselves into the framework of our Acharya's directives. So every one of us is expected to churn Srila Prabhupada's purport. Every one of us are expected to churn the science of Krishna consciousness and try to derive perspectives and align ourselves within the framework of what our Acharyas are doing. We cannot go outside of the framework, but within the framework, we need to find ways and means because as we uh, move forward, the new generation needs new ways and new strategies uh, you know, of uh, presenting certain topics. The same topic, the un uncovering the signs of punishment, if I have to speak to some sort of a, a college going or a school going children, so the way we will align and present the topic will be different. But the drive home, the seed, beach will remain the same. So uh, this is just a little arrogance, we can say, or little freedom of uh, independent thoughtfulness is being just brought in, that's all. And that's how every, uh, every uh, author, every speaker, because if we have not bringing in that, we all can play Prabhupada lectures. We just play Prabhupada lectures on every topic, hear them, and we are done. We hear because it's a bona fide hearing, purifying hearing. Why we are calling different speakers? Because every speaker brings and is expected to share his or her realizations. Because his or her realization may be limited, may be primitive, but it's still worth it. Because we all have to go through, oh my God, oh, that, that's the oh, one, fantastic. I, oh, I this is like this Sindhu Mataji said. Oh, I really, oh my God, I also had this similar experience in Ekadashi. Oh, I, I also had this similar pain. Oh, you came out of this. Oh, you, so sometimes we give hope to each other. So that is why this, this, these types of learnings amongst, you know, a practicing devotees is not just that I am the boss, I am teaching, you are the student. It is a kind of a sharing session, just that I am taking the perspective of a speaker. But as I said, we all can equally contribute to make it, uh, you know, wide. I hope. Uh, yeah. Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you so very much for taking time and explaining so elaborately. Appreciate it, Prabhu. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Okay. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Is that okay? Can... Yes, yes, yes. Can... Okay. Thank you, dear devotees. So since you have all got interest hearing the first session, so request all of you to please join next Wednesday, sharp at 8 a.m. 8 p.m. I don't know why I'm saying a.m. 8 p.m. EST timings. So see you all next Wednesday. Thank you so much, Ram Girdhari Prabhuji, for your wonderful association. I know you are sweating too much <laughs> seeing you. I'm feeling. No, I I, I am sweating too much because I am an assembly of so much of an August audience. So I am not sure how to respond. <laughs> Don't say that.
<laughs> anyway, so we'll stop here. Let's pay obeisances to all the Vaishnavas. Vanchha Kalpata Rupesha Kripa Sindhu Vaivacha Padita Nam Krishna Vaivyo Namo Nama. Ananta Koti Vaishnav Rindi Ki Jai, Shala Prabhupad Ki Jai, all the assembled Vaishnavas Ki Jai, His Grace Ram Girdhari Prabhu Ki Jai. Jai. Hare Krishna, thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, dear devotees. I'm ending the call. See you all next Wednesday. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.